What is happening, sports fans? It's your main man, Matt, from the DFS 5 Pack. This time I am rocking it solo. It is Thursday, December 9th. Yes, it is. We got three NBA games to talk about. I just hit you with some NFL info for the showdown slate, Steelers and Vikings. Now I'm going to hit you with some NBA. Going to make both, both videos free to the public because short slates, first off, one's a showdown, so obviously it's only one game. And then as far as NBA, go, NBA goes, we only have three tonight, so should be pretty quick. Got some interesting games on the slate. Let's not waste any time and dive right in. Actually, before I do that, let me talk about our promoters real quick. So first off at Jazz Sports, if you sign up, you get a no-risk wager up to $1,000 in your first bet. That's one k back if your first wager is graded a loss. Really pretty much self-explanatory. Can't beat it. And as far as loose lines goes, you get really good lines and odds over there. Reduced juice and other perks that they're offering. You also get an additional 50% off when you sign up there. So check out the description. Check out the links in the description of the video. Would appreciate it if you guys check that out. And uh yeah, let's touch on this NBA tonight. So again, three games. A couple of them are in prime time. Actually, only one game, I guess, is on national TV. Let's check it out. It's got to be the Lakers game. Actually, no. No primetime games with the NFL tonight. Um, Utah Phillies on NBA TV, so that's the best we got. Now, all the games are pretty early, so the last game starts at 8.30 Eastern. That's nice. Usually, NBA slates are going on late throughout the night. I like to get my beauty sleep, so tough for me to stay up on those West, for those West Coast games. I'm excited that the last game tonight's at 8.30. Starting with the first game, however, we've got Utah and Philly. This should be a good game. Small spread. I believe the line's three. Yes, it's three. 216 total. Every line on this slate is two and a half, three, and four. So very tight spreads. Starting with Philly, Joel Embiid looks is starting to look more and more like the Joel Embiid we know and love. Played last night. So did Utah. Never love Embiid on back-to-backs, but we're still getting Embiid with no Simmons. There's other really good plays on this slate. You know, Nicole Jokic, for example, and it's going to be hard to play both of them. But I do like Embiid a lot here. I think that I like Jokic a little bit more, um, but it's close. I don't think either of them are, are must. And I can understand why anyone would like Embiid more, for sure. Get up spot, uh, you know, NBA TV game. Not really, not like that's a get up spot, but still, um, you know, get up spot against Gobert. I like Embiid here. Tobias Harris, 7,600 is fine. You know, I usually don't like going to guys against Utah, but it's a small slate, so I'm fine with Harris. Um, no one from Philly is going to be a priority for me on this slate. I mean, even with only three games, we've got six teams, six teams to choose from. Philly is not where I'm going to get a lot of exposure to, unless we get some injury news. You've got Danny Green sitting there at 3,400. Where is he at? 3,300, excuse me. I'm fine with it. I think you could probably do worse. Could probably do better as well, though. Utah side looks a little bit more desirable. Starting off, you've got Rudy Gobert. If you don't want to spend up on a Jokic or Embiid, Gobert looks like a nice look at 8,400. Didn't Wasn't really needed last night against Minnesota, but was awesome against Cleveland the game before that. I watched a lot of that game. He was awesome defensively. I have no problems with him at 8,400. Donovan Mitchell, 8,800, 45 plus and five straight now. He's playing really good ball. He's not a priority for me here, but I do like their price tags. So probably more likely to get to either of these guys than Embiid. They're, neither of them are must. Now, Conley has played the last, Conley played the last back-to-back -back Utah had. There's always some, you know, chance that he sits tonight. If he sits, you get Ingles much more in play, Clarkson more in play. But as of now, my two favorite pieces of Utah are going to be two cheap guys. One's Rudy Gay, who I prefer if Hassan Whiteside's out, but you've got under 4K Rudy Gay playing bigger minutes for Utah right now. Again, they kind of, they rolled last night, not kind of, they rolled last night, won by 32. He wasn't needed to play big minutes. And then the other guy's Royce O'Neal, who just continues to be productive. Now, I feel like any one of these games, this is going to fall on its head, or he's going to fall on its head, excuse me. He's not a guy that's going to put up 30-plus forever, but he's playing really good ball right now. And on a small slate of 4,300, he looks like one of the better value plays out there um, in any format. I'm sure he's going to get a lot of love with that. 
you know, right now he's projected to be upwards of 20% owned. All right, next up, we've got the Lakers in Memphis. Um, the highest total of the night here, 223 and a half. Lakers favored by three. The Grizzlies finally lost last night without Morant. Dylan Brooks got ejected late, and he wasn't great. He was in foul trouble the entire game. He's getting a ton of love on this slate, coming in as the most popular player on DK. It makes sense. Pays up spot against the Lakers. He's 6,200. And there's a ton to like about Brooks here. Now, they haven't played in a, in a lot of close games, so that's skewing the minutes a little bit. But I imagine he's going to play 35-plus here, and at 6,200, he looks like one of the better plays on the slate. Tyus Jones at 6K. More solid than spectacular, but he's a cog type. The the Anthony Melton at forty six hundred has big upside, you know, albeit with with a low floor. So I like him more in tournaments. Desmond Bain's price is just too high, although he's been really good. I mean, you look at the game against Dallas and Miami, the Toronto game. I'm not banking on that, but pays up spot. I think that the entire Memphis team is in play. All these guys I've mentioned um, haven't gotten to Jaron Jackson yet. Kyle Anderson is in play if he plays. If he's out, I like all those other guys more. Sharon Jackson getting a lot of love and deservedly so. 7K is pricey, but again, good spot against the Lakers. He He's just a good look in all formats. Brandon Clark is out here again, so I only like Jackson more. And then Steven Adams at 5,100 playing 30-plus 30, 30 minutes the past two games. He's definitely in play for me here as well. You know, ideally you can get up to Embiid or Jokic at center, but if you want to prioritize guys elsewhere, I think spending down on a guy like Steven Adams is in play. Um, yeah, the entire Memphis roster is in play. Small slate. They're, they look like they're in one of the better spots in the entire slate. I will go back and change my take on DeAnthony Melton. He's in play in all formats, getting a lot of love and deservedly so at that price point. As far as the Lakers go, they're healthy. All their guys are playing. Dwight Howard, no thanks at 4K at 4,400. You know, not sure of his minutes. Malik Monk went back down to 20 minutes, so he's riskier than I would like. He's also got upside. His price is up. I think he's in play in tournaments. Uh, but none of these Lakers guys are going to be a must, are going to be must with LeBron, Davis, and Westbrook all playing. If you want to play one of those guys in tournaments, uh, I get it but it's hard to say that they're like the best plays on the slate when they're all in and priced accordingly. All right, last but not least, I think probably the best game for DFS purposes is on the slate, and that's the Spurs and Nuggets. So Keldon Johnson is, is out tonight for San Antonio. He got hurt a couple days ago. And Devin Vassell, he's probable now. So... With Calvin Johnson now, all of a sudden he's in play. You know, how long did he miss? Um, I kind of wish he'd, he had been out. He hasn't played since the 2nd of December, and he barely played there. Um, you know, first and foremost, starting with San Antonio, Deontay Murray looks like one of the best plays on the slate. No, Calvin Johnson doesn't hurt him. Just opens up more rebounding opportunities. Uh, 9,700, I like him a lot. Priority for me if I'm making one lineup here. This game is... Two-point spread with San Antonio favored, two and a half. This game should be really competitive, and Murray's the top piece of San Antonio. Then you got Jakob Pertl, 6,400. Just a cock just to just get there every night. Now, I'm not really worried about him breaking the slate at this price point, but he's going to need to play big minutes against Jokic at home. I prefer he's definitely in play. Now, with Keldon Johnson out, I know Vassell comes in, but I'm not sure how many minutes Vassell's going to play here. You've potentially got... Um, Thad Young at 3,300 could easily get some run. If he gets run, he's in play. Now, more of a crapshoot than anything else because we just don't know if he's going to get run. But if he does, you know, I like I like taking a chance on him in tournaments if you're multi-entering on the chance he does get good run with Keldon Johnson out. Um, and then the other guy I wanted to mention was two. one was Derek White and the other's Lonnie Walker. So Lonnie Walker was really popular last slate. I mean, I know on my video, I got a couple people commenting about Lonnie Walker. Like, yeah, he was in play, but 
I'm not going to go out of my way to talk about Lonnie Walker hardly ever because he's just not a great DFS player. Sure, he has the occasional 30 spot like he did against Golden State, but I mean, check the game log. There's just nothing in here that makes me like go out of want to go out of my way to play him. That said, on a small slate like this, if he gets that 30 spot tonight, you're going to need him. So he's in play for that reason alone. Um, and then the last guy's Derek White. So he was really, really good a couple of days ago against the Knicks. He's shown upside a bunch recently. 6,300, I think is fair for him. You know, I don't know if I want to use him with Murray, but small slate, anything goes. And he's in play, if nothing else here. Um, you know, Murray's the priority, but White's certainly in play. It looks like they're getting about the same love. And it makes sense given their different price points. Now going to the Denver side, you've got them on a back-to-back after they played OT last night. Jokic was phenomenal, dropping 73 DK points, triple dubbed with 39, 11, and 11. I mean, he's just amazing. He's the top stud on the slate. I like him a lot. I think game stack in this game is in play. Uh, I don't need much of the Utah Philly game. Lakers Memphis game is really appealing from a 30,000 foot view, but wouldn't be the first time we've seen either of these teams be involved in a blowout. So it you know, wouldn't be shocked there. And this game, I think it's going to be really close and high scoring. So Jokic is the definite, the top priority from Denver. And I don't like the other guys from Denver with Jokic in usually, but again, it's a smaller slate. So I don't like guys against Utah. I don't like guys on Denver with Jokic in, you know, the Lakers have all their studs in, but you got to play, you got to play guys. So you're going to have to pick a less than desirable spot for at least a few of your guys. Aaron Gordon could be sneaky in tournaments. He plays monster minutes. He doesn't do that much with those minutes. I mean, those assist numbers are pretty sad. Doesn't even get a lot of rebounds anymore. He's a good defender, but man, they're paying him a lot of money to do not much. Uh, Jeff Green's been pretty productive lately. His game log looks a lot like his yeah, game log looks a lot like Aaron Gordon. So 4,800, I have no issues there. Um, if you are fading Jokic, I think using a guy like Zeke Naji makes sense. You know, maybe a chance that. Jokic plays less minutes tonight, back-to-back, OT last night. You never know. And then the guards, Bones, 3,500, I think, is in play. He'll probably get decent run here. Compazzo at 3,800 is fine. Monte Morris at 5,400 is fine. All these guys look about the same to me at their relative price points. My favorite is definitely Monte Morris. He's also the most expensive, so do with that what you will. Um, I'm building right now. I'm gonna. I hate to be prisoner of the moment, but let's go with this game right here. Go Jokic. Deontay Murray. I got 4,700 left. Um, I mean, there's guys all over. I'm out to the line right now. Give me Dylan Brooks. Give me Deontay Melton. The power forward. Give me Ruby Gay. Give me Royce O'Neal at forward. Guard, give me, again, this is kind of like a cash build ish. So I think you could go Lonnie Walker. I'll get love. You could go Derek White. If you went Lonnie Walker, you got 5,800 left. And then you got like a Mike Conley. If you went Derek White, uh, yeah, 32 left. Is there anyone even down there that we were interested in? <coughs> Not really. Not really at all. So now we're going to be looking to go there. Um, but, yeah, you guys get the point. Uh, plenty of different ways to go, even on a three-game slate. I like this slate. You know, all the games are kind of compressed starting within an hour and a half each other from 7 to 8.30 Eastern. Then we got football to watch. So I like how it's planned out tonight. I wish we had some more games because I'm sure we'll get a ton of them tomorrow. But that is what it is. And I'll be excited to talk over that big-ass slate tomorrow. So thanks as always, guys. Appreciate it. Have a great Thursday.